Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. So I had a funny incident happen to me the other day. Um, I just filmed a new video. Will 2023 be the honest horribilis for Harry and Meghan? So if you haven't had a chance, please go and check it out. But the funny thing is I accidentally uploaded the wrong version of the video. It was the unedited version. I mean, I it wasn't the raw footage but it was the one before I put in pictures and the clip of Camilla with the teddy bears. So it was literally just 26 minutes of me talking to the camera with unflattering angles and funny facial expressions, which was literally my worst nightmare. I would never impose you watching me for 26 minutes straight making funny, goofy faces. I was mortified. So literally 2,500 people got to watch me make funny, goofy expressions. And to those of you who did, I apologize. But some of y'all, you guys were so nice about it. Nobody said anything. You all were so supportive and sweet, telling me it was a great video. It wasn't until someone said, I didn't see the Camilla clip, that I realized I uploaded the wrong version of the video because once I upload a video, I never check up my video again. I just look at the comments. So thank you to those who mentioned you did not see the clip because I was mortified. But the edited version is now online for your viewing pleasure. So you know the drill. Sit back and relax. Grab yourself a beverage and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. So is Meghan Markle going to be the new housewife of Montecito? Yes, Meghan Markle imagines herself a future housewife of Montecito, living with her neighbors, Oprah and Ellen. No, actually she doesn't, but this was a question that was brought up when she interviewed Andy Cohen in her season finale of her podcast, Archetypes, Manifesting a Cultural Shift, with guests Trevor Noah, Andy Cohen, and Jude Apatow. Now, I have to be honest with you. I literally only listened to half, maybe 20 minutes of this podcast. It was so boring. I just could not finish it. This was the season finale. It was subpar. It was not impressive. It was not interesting. Pretty much summing up her entire season of her Archetype podcast. Being the season finale, Megan wanted to switch it up and do something different where she brought in men to talk about the archetypes from a men perspective, but it was manifesting a cultural shift. This kind of felt like she was just throwing stuff at the wall, everything but the kitchen sink. She had a professional talking about mindset and manifestation, and then she just interviewed three men from Hollywood. Again, it didn't really make a lot of sense. You know, her whole season was about the limiting beliefs and the labels and stereotypes put upon women. So she interviewed three men who basically talked about themselves. And then she had a lady talking about manifestation. Again, I listened to half the episode. It didn't really make a lot of sense. But I did listen to the part with Andy Cohen. And I got some really funny tidbits. So the hilarious part is we all know that Meghan Markle was on the peripheral of Hollywood. She was never quite, as she says, having a seat at the table. Meghan never was invited. They were much like, you can't sit with us, Meghan. Meghan was not the cool girl. She was not the it girl. She was not the A-lister actress. She was the C-level actress who was trying to get on TV shows, who was begging for fame, always walking around trying to hire people to take her photo. We all know what she did. So it was really embarrassing when she, she had Andy Cohen, who was a talk show host and TV producer of the Real Housewife franchise on Bravo on her show. And she admitted to him that she'd actually met him on two separate occasions. And he flat out did not remember her. <laughs> Oops. That's embarrassing. And then she talked about, yeah, I could never get on your show. Even when I was on Suits, yeah, I could just never quite get on your show because you were not an A-list actress, Megan. So it was pretty awkward and embarrassing and delicious at the same time. But then he started groveling to Megan. Oh my God, Megan, I can't believe we didn't get you on the show. And then Andy brought up the rumor 
that when she first moved to California, many people thought that Megan was going to join the Real Housewives franchise and be part of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Well, of course, that didn't happen, and they made up the fake, oh, you'll be the Real Housewives of Montecito with your neighbors, Oprah and Ellen. So that was actually a little funny. But the funnier part, when she says, well, I don't really watch the show because, you know, it just has too much drama. And when your life is caught up in drama, I just don't want to watch anything negative where women are catty and put upon each other in these fake caricatures of each other. Was that because Megan was not able to get on the show on Bravo and be interviewed with Andy, that she now considers the show kind of beneath her and that she finds that the show might... Uh, you know, label women in a negative way, that they're all catty, there's a lot of drama. So she kind of threw a little bit of shade at Andy and the franchise, but she doesn't watch The Housewives and doesn't understand how her friends can watch the show. But it was a little funny how she did mention she couldn't get on his talk show. You know, he didn't recognize her, and then she kind of throws The Housewives franchise under the bus. Her other two guests were Trevor Noah and Judd Apatow, who is a big-time director, and she acted like she was such a fan of all of his movies, which, quite frankly, didn't portray women in the best light. So it's like she kind of contradicts herself with being a fan of, you know, this type of movie, but then not being a fan of this type of TV show when they all kind of play people in a negative stereotype just kind of downplayed Andy and the housewives because she, you can tell, had a bone to pick with Andy where he did not recognize her. So there was a very interesting story that came out today from a guy by the name of Neil Bazo who served as the senior most officer for their counterterrorism unit of the Met Police starting in March of 2018 and was in charge of royal protection. He talks about how Meghan Markle faced the most disgusting and very real threats in the UK, kind of playing into the victimhood of Harry and Meghan. Um, he said it was mostly from the right wing people who basically on the daily were throwing horrible threats toward Meghan. He said, quote, they were well disgusting and very real calling extreme right-wing terrorism the fastest-growing threat in the country. Now, again, he doesn't actually give any real examples of the threats. He just said, oh, they received a lot of, you know, horrible threats online and threatened. You know, there was some genuine real threats there. And apparently there were some actual arrests to people persecuted for those threats. But let's get real here. The entire royal family has experienced threats. It's not just Harry and Meghan. Just recently, King Charles and Camilla had eggs thrown at them when they went to a walkabout. Not to mention, last year around Christmas, a man with a crossbow scaled the walls of Windsor Castle in an attempt to assassinate Her Majesty the Queen. Not to mention there was a real assassination attempt against Prince Charles when he visited Australia in 1994 where shots actually rang out and the attempted kidnapping of Princess Anne. So there had been some real documented physical threats against other members of the royal family and online it is brutal. Do you guys remember when Betty White passed away a lot of people were like oh the wrong white lady died and then when the queen died people were celebrating her death. The royal family, Kate, William, all of them, Andrew was heckled at the queen's funeral receive a huge amount of negative press, criticism, and real threats. Harry and Meghan are not unique, nor are they alone. So the fact that he comes out and says they received all of these, you know, extreme right ring terrorism threats online and it's disgusting, but he failed to give any examples nor did he talk about any of the other royal family members. He was in charge of royal protection. Again, we've had some real evidence of physical attempts on Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, Prince Charles, Prince Charles and Camilla just recently. People online have been berating 
poor little princess Charlotte. Uh, they say horrible things about Kate and William on the daily. So I just found it a little weird how this story was planted by people and a couple of other outlets. Are they trying to lay the groundwork for his upcoming lawsuit to prove to people, oh, they're suffering these horrible, dangerous threats in the UK? Again, the horrible people of the UK. But I just find it, it was a terrible article and they didn't really go into great detail. I don't know. Sometimes I just really question the news sources, why they put out these stories when they put it out and why he felt the need to have this interview. But there was absolutely no real information here at all. He just talked about how they received threats. So there you go, guys. <laughs> Once again, painting Harry and Meghan as the little victims and everyone's so mean to just Harry and Meghan, but nobody else in the royal family gets threats. Nope, nobody else. Earthshot Prize is here, guys. On Wednesday, Catherine and William will arrive in Boston and the celebrations will begin. Now, they are due to arrive on Wednesday, and this is the first time that they have been in the States in almost eight years. Catherine and William will start their tour of Boston at Boston City Hall, where they're going to meet up with the mayor, Michelle Wu. And Ambassador Caroline Kennedy will help start the countdown to the very glitzy and star-studded Earthshot Prize ceremony at the MGM Music Hall on Friday evening. Now, this is an invitation-only event, so it, like I said before, who's who is going to be there, not like the event with the Harkles with Alec Baldwin hosting. On Thursday... The Royals will see the work that the Boston-based organizations are doing to create a more sustainable world and learn about some of the innovative technologies being utilized at Greentown Labs in Somerville. Later on that afternoon, they're going to stop by ROCA, a nonprofit organization that's worked for 35 years to create a cohesive approach to save and help change the journey of the lives of high-risk young people. Now, on Friday afternoon, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, is going to have a solo trip to the Center on the Developing Child at Harvard University, where she's going to learn on some of the new best practices that she can take back to her own royal foundation, the Center for Early Childhood, where she continues her work pioneering in this area. Prince William will have a tour of the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum, President John F. Kennedy's moonshot mission, which challenged America to put a man on the moon, is the key inspiration behind the Earthshot Prize. The royal couple will then step out together at Earthshot Prize Ceremony Friday evening, where a star-studded lineup of performances and presenters will hype up the excitement. They have Billie Eilish, Annie Lennox, Ellie Golding, and Chloe Hall will take stage with prizes awarded by Rami Malek, Catherine O'Hara, and Shailene Woodley. Like last year, Princess Kate will hand out an Earthshot prize, and Prince William will make the closing remarks. Um, I am super excited about this event. There are 15 finalists who are competing for the Earthshot Prize in five different categories. They are Protect and Restore Nature, Clean Our Air, Revive Our Oceans, Build a Waste-Free World, and Fix Our Climate. It's going to be very exciting to see who wins the Earthshot Prize. Now, um, the Earthshot Prize Awards ceremony airs on Sunday, December 4th on PBS. So what do you guys think of Meghan Markle's finale of her Archetype podcast? What do you think about their story about Meghan and Harry receiving a large amount of online threats and how they failed to mention the real threats that the other royals have received? And are you excited for Prince William and Catherine to be in the States for Earthshot Prize? And do you plan to tune in for the broadcast um, on the 4th. Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. We've done it, guys. We have over 20,000 subscribers. Thank you, guys, very much. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.